Hello everyone, this is Dave from Dave's Resend Things. Welcome to Wreathster Week. Seven days, seven wreaths celebrating Easter. Today, we are on day number two of our Wreathster Week. Why don't I just get started and I'll show you how I put it all together. Starting off day two with our 14 inch wire wreath frame. I have some floral picks from Michael's and as well from Michael's this wired ribbon. Look at the color of this. This is two and a half inch wire ribbon. I love the colors. A pipe cleaner, a cable tie, and some usual crafting utensils that I'm going to be using today. Here is our ribbon. I just love this ribbon, but here's a little dupe if you don't want to go out and spend the money on Michaels. The ribbon on the right is actually from the Dollar Tree. Look how close and how similar these two look. So here's a little dupe. If you like this ribbon, you can always grab it at the Dollar Tree as well for a little bit less. I'm going to start off making my bow today. And this is a double-sided ribbon, so I don't have to worry about twisting it in the middle and making sure my good side is facing one way. I'm going to place my center point at the six inches and then I'm going to do roughly about a five inch loop to start off with. So I'm going to place my hand down, bring that ribbon over to the other side, hold that down, and then I'm going to do the five inches on the other side as well. So now I'm just going to count down five inches, place my finger down, and then I'm going to grab that ribbon on the other side and pull it over to the opposite side. And now next, I'm going to make those loops just a tad bit bigger. So I'm going to use one finger length between the end and the new loop. And then I'm going to bring that ribbon over and do the same thing at the other side. It's a finger length longer. And then I just continue doing that for, you know, maybe about five or six times. And then once I'm happy with the amount of loops I'm going to have, I'm going to come over about an inch from that six inch mark and cut. And now I'm just going to squish that center of our bow, place it in between my thumbs and finger just to kind of get a placement and the center point. And I'm happy with that. Now I'm going to take my cable tie and I'm going to use my cable tie to adhere it. I'm not going to stick it all the way or pull it all the way tight. I want to make sure I have my center before I pull it tight. Now, if you want, you can also use a pipe cleaner. You don't necessarily have to use the cable tie. I'm just using the cable tie today because I don't want that ribbon bow to go anywhere. And then once I find that middle, I'm going to pull it nice and tight and cut off my excess. Now it's time to make my tails. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut at 18 inches two strips of my ribbon and then I'm going to do 18 inches plus 2 inches which is a 20 inch. And these are going to be my tails. So I'm going to finish off the tails with a dovetail and all you do is you fold it in half and cut on an angle. Then I'm just going to place everything on top, squish it together in the center, fold it and then I'm going to make a crease right in the center where I want those tails to lay. And I'm just going to squish it together and then grab my pipe cleaner, wrap it around that cable tie, give it a couple of good twists just to make sure it's attached. And inside that opening, you're going to place the tail of your bow and then give it another couple of twists. Make sure it's nice and attached, nice and secure, and it's not going to go anywhere. And then you can flip that over and you can fluff it up if you want, but right now I'm not going to fluff it up until a little bit later on when we attach it to our wreath base. But there is your beautiful ribbon bow all ready for our wreath. And to make the wreath, all I'm going to do is wrap that ribbon around. I'm going to fold the ribbon over onto itself, add a little hot glue there, and then I'm just going to wrap that ribbon around. Now, in the previous episode, you saw me wrapping another wreath frame. I kind of did that one haphazardly. This one, I'm kind of taking my time wrapping the ribbon around because it's going to show. So the other one, we covered it with the pom-poms. This one here, I'm not covering it. I want it to show. 
and I want to make sure it looks nice and neat. Finishing off that roll that we used previously with the bow, and I'm going to start on with my second roll. So for this wreath, if you're going to do something similar, I used two rolls of this ribbon. Of course, I just love Easter colors. Every time I do Easter wreaths, they just make me smile because the colors are so bright and so beautiful. I'm coming to the end. I'm going to chop off the excess of my ribbon, and then I am going to add a little hot glue on that little tab there, fold it over, and glue it onto itself so it doesn't go anywhere. Once that's done, we can flip it over. And this is where I noticed that there was kind of two different color ribbons here. <laughs> but that's okay because half of it we're covering it with a bow and half of it we're covering it with the florals. So you can see here I'm placing my bow and then I'm just gonna see my floral picks. Like I said previously in some of my videos, I do what I call a dry run. So I don't glue anything down. I just kind of plan what I'm going to do. You see here I'm separating and divvying up all my floral picks in half to see how much I want or need. And I decide I'm going to do the purple tulips, the pink tulips, and then one bunch of those pink flowers. I don't know the names of them, but they are beautiful. And of course, these flowers just scream spring, scream Easter, in my opinion. And I'm cutting off all of the stems so I can separate them and glue them down like you're seeing here. So I'm just taking one stem at a time, using my glue gun tool, and gluing everything down in place. And I've separated everything in half so there's an equal amount of the pink, the dark pink, the light pink, the pink flowers, and the purple tulips. And I'm going to keep adding on until I have a few of them left over. I don't add everything all at once because I want to place my bow and then I want to fill in the gaps just in case I missed anything. So here I am just using those twist ties to twist around that bow, making sure it's nice and secured and where I want it located. Once that's done, I'm going to chop off the excess and I like to add a little hot glue to make sure it's not going to go anywhere. And here you can kind of see I do need to fill in some spaces, especially on the right hand side. I need to add a little more flowers. That's why I keep some leftovers on hand and I don't glue them all down right at once, just so I can get an idea of what I need and where I need to fill it. And once I finished filling it all in, adding my last flower on there, I am going to fluff up that bow. And if you've watched my channel before, you know I love fluffing bows. I can do it forever. <laughs> but there you go. We have our beautiful ribbon wreath with our huge bow those beautiful Easter colored flowers, the tulips, the pink flowers. I just love how this turned out. All the colors coordinated and that ribbon. I just love the checkered ribbon with all of those beautiful Easter colors. Of course, with all these Easter colors, it just makes me smile. And I hope this wreath makes you smile as well. And I hope you enjoyed viewing it today. Don't forget to click that playlist right down below in the description box so you can see all of the other episodes of our Wreathster Week. This concludes day two. Thank you so much for joining me today. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can be notified every time I upload a new video. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye for now.